Hi guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to Loza Chats. I have a very special guest with me. Say hi to Chipo. Hi, my name is Chipo and I am a travel blogger. And yeah, so I blog at chipoautumn.com and yeah, I just reveal Zambia to people. This is not an expert conversation. This is just two people creating a space for openness, honesty, and no judgment. So if you're keen on that, please watch on. If you're not, click off. It's fine. Our society is very focused on labeling women. So how you're labeled is how you're treated. I'm single. Chipo is married. It might be subtle. It might be obvious but we're treated differently mm -hmm. so I want to know like what kind of experiences you can share with me about you being single versus how you're treated now that you're a married woman obviously there is that thing of where if you're not married you're considered a child and then when you get married you're an adult now automatically uh, yeah automatically <laughs> like it doesn't it just switches immediately uh, you're going through the processes of getting married and then um, immediately after the wedding and suddenly they want to hear your opinion in meetings and you know they call you for kitchen parties and I wasn't invited before but yeah. then now you want me to be there wow you know that type of thing yeah so um, and I think for me because I got married quite young yeah yeah I got married at 24 so it was a thing of suddenly from being a child, because most people didn't even know that I had a job or anything. They just thought, oh, I was my father's child. <laughs> Until I got married, and then suddenly I misses this and that. Yeah. And they want to, you know, they want to talk to you. They want to invite you into conversations. And I think it's, yeah, it's there. Definitely you gather social capital when, when you get married. Like social it's capital. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that phrase actually. Social yeah. capital. You got I don't have any social capital at the moment. Do you feel older? No. You know the thing about adulting is that you you think you you have a lot of things that you need to Google. You know, I still need to Google how to do certain things. I Google something every day, every day, I think like five times. Yeah. I, I'm not convinced I'm an adult yet. But then obviously some people think I am. How does that affect you mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically? When people put a label that you don't, you know, ascribe to. Okay, I think I spend a lot of my time fighting against the label. So I take, for instance, I have kept my maiden name. Mm. And so I refuse to be called Mrs. Whatever. And most people take it as I'm refusing the fact that I'm married, but I'm not. You know, yeah. I, I'm only saying I want to keep my name. It took me a while to get to a point where I love my name mm. and I identify myself with my name. And so I'd like to keep it. Yeah. And so it's, I have a lot of pushback because yeah. of that. And so I have people, women in their fifties that are like, no, why are you refusing your husband? You have to accept the fact that you're married. I'm like, I accept it. I am, you know, I'm happy. You made the decision yeah, to, get, to get, married. get married, you know? But then I just want to control the way I'm addressed. Yeah. And I like my name. I would like you to refer to me as Miss This, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, and it's affected me in a way that I now have to push back a little bit more. Mm. And so um, I need to, there's this expectation that, uh, this expectation that a married woman can do certain things. So, you can't go out. You can't have single friends. Oh my gosh. Um, you can't go you can't out. You can't talk to guys. You can't yeah. have male friends. Yeah. All those. Yeah. And then for me, my biggest, like, the people I hang out with the most mm. are male friends, yeah. you know? And I go out with them and given the difference in lifestyles between me and my, you know, in my partner, mm. it's different. And so I will go out with my friends without him mm. and as long as it's discussed as long as it's prior notice it's okay but then people have a problem with that yeah and so you're like oh why are you out with your husband or without your husband mm. or maybe they find me somewhere and they're like oh where's he and they're yeah. looking around i'm like nah. 
I find myself asking people in relationships mm -hmm. where their partner is when I meet them. Yeah. In my mind, I guess it's like a whole society thing of couples go out together, especially mm -hmm. when they're married. Um, but yeah, like I also ha I also do that. <laughs> Mental think, notes to self. <laughs> yeah, I take a note. I, I will. Note <laughs> do that. But I think one of the biggest things is, and, and this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. I think that um, when uh, people get married, the woman usually sets aside whatever dreams, whatever plans she had, and she you know just like focuses on the guy yeah and his dreams are her dreams now yeah. and there's no separation between individual and and couple and most times so you find when you see one you've seen the other one because they're always together yeah. and whatever and that's good spending time together is very important yeah. and um we always make sure we set time for that yeah like you know week like you know you get so busy you have to literally just put in put it in pen and say okay we're going to be together from mm -hmm. this day to this day you know mm -hmm. but then you still are individuals you're different you need to pursue your different interests you know especially it's different when you're the same yeah you're very similar yeah but then for me we're completely different like we have a few uh common areas but then we're really different in our lifestyles in our careers and all that and so we won't be together all the time like probably 70 percent of the time we're not together yeah you know and um yeah and i think people find a problem with that so they'll be like oh where is she or yeah. where is he yeah like no i'm just having fun on my own because <laughs> yeah. you can have fun on your own yeah, yeah, but you then can. because i don't know maybe people are insecure in their own relationships that they feel the need to always be with their partner mm -hmm. and they feel the need to be seen with the partner because how are you going to know that i have someone if you don't see us together there's a lot of that mentality yeah. i feel like they're projecting on you because to them seeing you together means that you're happy you're collective mm -hmm. but then they only see maybe an hour of your week yeah, yeah you know like they only see an hour of your week and they don't know about your actual private life yeah the, the, those people that are like that so um there's some people that just want to you know they're social media people so they want their love on social media that you That's know true. yeah and so you let them be and but then they're more private people also yeah. that are like that and I it might not only be insecurity mm. some of them might just be that's their understanding of what a relationship mm. is that's and so true. that's what they're projecting on you like what they think is a relationship the only spending time together especially when you're married when people talk about like you as a person does it bother you that they talk about you as misses someone and not you as cheap or the person <laughs> Okay, the, the simple answer is yes. It bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> it bothers the hell out of me. Okay, yeah, but the thing is, most people, there's this thing where the wife is part of the husband yeah. forever. Mm. No. And especially in a time when you're trying to set your own path. Like, yeah, okay, I got married young. Okay, it's not young, but it was, yeah, you know, no, a bit yeah. early. And, um,. It was before I was set in anything, you know, mm. so yeah, I already had a job, but it wasn't really a career And then now it's turning out to be, you a know, yeah. yeah, and then I my interests weren't really set and now I'm creating new interests and I, I have new hobbies and mm. new things I would like to pursue and I am being called Mrs. This like no, I have this name I have set for myself call me this, you know, I and yeah, you're it your does. own person. Yeah, yeah. You're your own person beyond being a married person. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's okay to be identified as part of a couple, but then if that is your main identity to a lot of people, then it's a it's a problem, you know. And and I think a lot of people can't distinguish between um, being a wife and uh, being a person like an individual and then yeah they think as if you're denouncing your husband when you say hey i am a wife at home but then here address me as this that i've presented myself to you yeah. as yeah i think that's like a good point because i've noticed that we're in a space mm -hmm. where a lot of people want the title oh, yeah, of yeah. being 
misses someone at mm -hmm. any cost it doesn't matter if they're in a bad relationship they're in an abusive relationship the moment you become misses someone then everything is fine because you honestly you gain respect yeah. people respect you mm -hmm. people treat you differently they address you differently mm -hmm. and it's so weird it's it's not weird but it's it's interesting to me that you're kind of sort of rejecting the social status quo of what you should be once you get married mm -hmm. and I actually like that a lot of times people are pressured mm -hmm. there's a lot there's a lot of pressure on people to get married there's mm -hmm. a lot of pressure on you to just it's like when you're on your own when you're an individual mm -hmm. your self-worth is maybe at like a five mm -hmm. and when you get married all of a sudden you're like uh, 95 you know people value you that much yeah yeah it's like you've gained something i don't know social it's, capital so again yeah social <laughs> you capital, gain social I capital. Think it also comes from the thing of a woman is never really considered her own person she belongs to someone and so like um when you're a child yeah your father's daughter and then you live in your father's house mm -hmm. or your uncle's house or whoever mm -hmm. male whichever male uh, you know, even when you're in a female-headed household, there's that one uncle that is called when yeah. there's a problem, when, when you something know? Happens. Like, so we regard women as someone's belonging. And so when you're your father's daughter and then you move to being your husband's wife and... so Someone's like, so mother. Someone's mother yeah. and ish. And so now people don't... They, 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 they can't come to terms with the fact that this woman... Is saying she's her own person but yeah. then there's this man next to her why doesn't she why doesn't he claim her yeah. and so there are times when it it reflects badly on on the husband mm. and so take for instance for me when I say oh don't call me mrs mm. call me chipo and then suddenly uh, they're like mm, take control of your wife you know like things like that I've heard are you a car? I've, <laughs> I know I'm an object I'm a person <laughs> Take control of your wife. Yeah, I've heard um, someone say that jokingly, but I know they were serious. Yeah. You know? Like, they were like, mm, your wife, you gotta do something about it. But then, no, you know, like, you have to identify that this is a person, this is someone who has their own dreams, their own feelings, they're in charge of their life. Yeah. And I think marriage is a partnership. We've been raised to feel like marriage is not a partnership, it mm -hmm. is you serving your husband mm. on you know a woman behind every successful man mm -hmm. you know you're never besides mm -hmm. your husband you know you're a helper you're a helper you help him you're behind him pushing him in order to make sure that the household succeeds but what about you yeah so it's like and and i think the 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 church is the biggest um perpetrator of that mm -hmm. and they they have the submission uh, what's that called doctrine mm -hmm. or whatever it's called and they push women to serve and be helpmates and all that stuff and in the process you get you 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 lose yourself and um whichever woman tries to stand up against that system is considered a rebel or yeah. considered Someone who I've been told to, to stop hanging out with white people. I don't have any white people. I, I, I don't have any white friends, but I was told uh -uh, you have to stop hanging out with the friends that you because have. Because your views are different from yes, yeah. normal yeah. views of what you should, what your role as a wife is. Yeah, and, that's crazy. And, and you get a lot of pushback, especially from. Uh, religious people and so <laughs> that's something I've, I've learned to you know like in life you eventually just know okay I shouldn't hang out with that one or like because there are times when certain views you can argue about them let's yeah. say you think differently and I think differently yeah. and then we talk about it mm. and we agree to disagree yeah. but then there's some people that get so emotional yeah. that they feel like you're committing blasphemy or heresy or whatever because you disagree with a biblical principle that they have you know and um they're just waiting to see your marriage fall down because, yes, she refused to submit, you know? There are a lot of things in the Bible that people don't follow today, you know? So if we're going to pick and choose, why can't you interpret things in your own way?
and have that accepted because mm-hmm. you're not telling someone else that what they think is wrong. You're just telling them that what you think mm-hmm. isn't for me. Yeah. And you're saying, I choose to live this way. Mm. This is me. And I will choose to live in a way that's comfortable for me. Yeah. And But then people take um, offense at that. They, and, and I think that's why I find myself not putting myself out there a lot. And so I won't say, oh, I'm not cooking today. I didn't feel like cooking. Mm. And I'm like, huh? You didn't cook for your husband. Hi. Oh my God, you're such a bad <laughs> wife. It's going to start. Yes. Someone else is going to cook else is for going him. To cook for if him. you don't do this, then someone else is going to do it for yeah. you. If you don't cook, if you don't, you know, carry him on your back, <laughs> someone else is going to carry him. Like, but no. Men are not no. children. Mm-mm. They're yes, not children. And that's the thing. Men Society are not treats children. them like children. As women, our self worth is attached to things. Our self-worth is attached to our virginity. You need to keep your virginity and, you know, wait until you're married because you're special. It's not because you're special, but because it's special for the man. It's a gift and to it's your a, Yeah, it's a gift to your husband. Like, how do you feel about people continuously telling girls to wait? Sex is, is, is learned. Hmm. You, no one gets it right on the first go, you yeah. know. And and so what they teach is that uh, keep your virginity, and then you know when you find your husband, when you get married, you're gonna have sex, and then you're gonna learn together. But then the thing is, they're only teaching the girl to keep her virginity. Mm. They don't mind if the guy goes out and sleeps with as many women as possible because you know boys will be boys and they have to sow their wild wild oats or whatever that yeah. saying is yeah and i feel like that's not fair that's not fair at all i if you're going to push virginity push it on on the, on yeah, yeah on on the men also but then um you find guys looking for virgins but then they they're not virgins themselves but then they want a virgin. Like, guys, it's just a high man. It's just a high man. It's going to break, and then she won't be a virgin, <laughs> and then what? You know? And I feel like it's not fair, and I feel like that pushes uh, a very negative um, a very negative perspective of sex on the, on the, on the girl. Yeah. And so now she has something negative connected to the sex. And so it doesn't just automatically... M- uh, like get out immediately mm. you get married you have sex and then oh I like sex now mm. it doesn't happen like that you have this thing in your mind that sex is bad and it's and not then, supposed to be for your pleasure yes it's just supposed yes. to be for his pleasure because you're the gift yes yes and then so you find so many women have been married for a long time and they've, and they've never had an orgasm like that's not fair you know yeah. and then some people some women don't know that pain is not normal during sex and why because they there's this negative connotation with it and so you think there's something bad about it and so you think it shouldn't be comfortable you think mm. it shouldn't be nice mm. and even when logically you know that you're supposed to enjoy it yeah. there's just something psychologically where yeah you know because it's been impound it's been in you for yeah. a long time and maybe if you well, and so finally when you have the sex it's it won't be nice, you know? Like, you won't like it. Because you will... you're told to expect pain. Yes. And that's the other yes. thing. Like, girls are taught that, you know, your first time is going to hurt. Mm-hmm. You are not going to like it. Mm-hmm. You are not going to like it for a long time. Yes. You are, you know, but you're, you're still going to do it. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the more you do it, maybe you'll like it. And then even just the sex education between... The, so like when when uh, a couple is getting married, mm. the sex education between what they what they teach the woman and what they the teach secret? the man. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like they teach. Okay, so like what they teach the woman is like the whole cake. Yeah. And then what they teach the man is like crumbs of the cake. Like it's one session. It's like five minutes, and mm. they're done. They just say, "Oh, just touch her everywhere. That's all. And kiss her here and there, and you're done." Like no. Oh, no, we're the ones that even need to be pleased yeah. even more than you. You guys just need, you know, because our our bodies are so different. Yes, the mechanism for men to have their pleasure is simpler. Mm-hmm. It's less complex than that of women, 
and I find that a lot of men don't understand women's bodies and they feel like what has worked previously Probably. is going to work on this person yeah. not understanding first of all you don't understand the physiology of a woman you don't understand the anatomy of a woman but then you still want to claim you're the man yeah. you know thank you <laughs> and sometimes it's our fault because oh. we fake things and we don't teach them on one hand it's our fault but on the other hand i think it's because of all the the negative connotations that have been attached to sex as you've grown up it's not for you it's for him so it, people find it hard to ask people find it hard to teach and how are you going to teach someone when you don't know yourself you don't know your body you don't know what turns you on mm -hmm. you don't know what makes you feel good so how do you tell someone else you have to learn they tell you you have to learn in marriage but are you how many people are actually open enough to listen to their partner and learn everything you've learned and discover this new person and just focus on what makes them tick mm -hmm. so that they can also focus on what makes you tick mm -hmm. it's really like a selfless act in a way because you have to let go of everything that you've learned mm -hmm. and just focus on one person okay i don't know why women fake orgasms mm. Uh, I think I've done it once or twice <laughs> and I hated myself afterwards. I'm like, I say I'm a feminist, but then I go and fake it and, and I apologize to myself afterwards. Mm -hmm. I was like, never again. I'm never doing that again. Because yeah. in the end, it's counterproductive. It, yeah. it, it works against you because now the guy thinks he knows what gets you off and then he's going to do the same thing next time. And that wasn't what worked, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, and so I think faking orgasms makes the problem worse. Trying to teach someone how to please you comes with a general awareness of the self, of how your body works. Um, do you like sit in the mirror and look at your vagina? I'm curious. Like I'm just curious to know if other people do this. <laughs> like, do you look at yourself and make observations about things that? look the same things that have changed like what's going on down there yes yes i do <laughs> i i think i, I always very... feel like i'm weird <laughs> no you i have always to know feel what's like i'm on. weird because a lot of people don't talk about this like we don't we don't talk about vaginas we just mm -hmm. you know talk about pussy and mm -hmm. yay you know pussy my mm -hmm. pussy bomb and pussy this mm -mm. okay <laughs> and no one ever wants to say vagina everyone wants to find a name for it Okay, a pussy flower. Or, uh, your flower. Hey, flower. Your flower. <laughs> your flower. Your cookie. Your secret I garden. Hate cookie. Ah, your secret, secret garden. garden. <laughs> it doesn't look like a garden in there. <laughs> your, your 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 pleasure chest. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Those people are romantics. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I do. I I I get the mirror and look there and and i've noticed changes yeah. the thing is as you get older it changes yeah yeah but then one thing i wasn't aware of and okay i think i was mm -hmm. to some extent but because i never saw a lot of people naked a lot yeah. of girls naked mm -hmm. um i th i thought all vaginas were the same <laughs> until uh i saw a few different ones mm -hmm. and and i was like oh okay so they're different it was a journey for me to get to a point where i look at it and i don't despise it yeah that was that was big that was something that was um yeah it took a while but why like why did you despise your vagina i'm not even sure i don't i don't know i don't know i just thought had like a general was... dislike yeah. of, for looking at it yeah because first it was darker than the rest of my body mm -hmm. you know and obviously that's understandable, the fact that it stays in compressed, like, you know, humid yeah. environments for a long time. But then, like, I just expected it to look different. I, I don't even understand why, but, but this was what I was given. And I think I was comparing it to, uh, to penises. Mm. And so penises are like, they're out there. They're, yeah. they're like majestic, you know, like, especially when one is erect, mm. <laughs> sex education. <laughs>
<laughs> like they're out there, you know, like they you can see everything, every part is defined. Yeah. And then for you, most parts are hidden. And then, you know, like there's so many things there, so many layers. And um, yeah, it took a while. But then I think I'm finally in a place where I'm like, hey, this is what I have. Mm -hmm. And it brings me pleasure. It, yeah. it, it does so many good things to me, for me. And um, yeah, like, this is what I have. I think it's all part of the self-love um, um, and also body um, hate, body yeah. hate thing. Like general, like most women have body issues. Mm. Yeah. And so it also translates to the vagina. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like the part that you can hate in secret because no one really sees it. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of us grow up mm. with an image of a of what a vagina looks like in biology books mm -hmm. and we're like okay so this is what it's supposed to look like but why does mine look, look different? different like we all know we have vaginas but it's a very secretive space mm -hmm. to be in where you have a vagina but you can't talk to someone that also has a vagina mm -hmm. and you can't compare notes you know mm -hmm. Your labia is big, or it's long, yeah. and then or it's chubby. Yeah, or it's you know, or it's chubby. Yeah. You know, your clitoris is like out there, mm -hmm. or it's like inside, and it only comes out when you're aroused. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a whole spectrum of things that we don't talk to each other about. We're only, you know, we only talk about like nice things. So it's it's very. It's and I think new. Sometimes we don't even know those things. Yeah. Like you don't even know. Some people don't know what their clitoris looks yeah. like. They don't know what type of, you know, labia they have mm. and all those things. But then I think people need, every woman needs to get a mirror and go down there and see. Just what explore. They have. Yeah. Look at yourself, get to know yourself because it's important. Mm -hmm. It's very important. When you know what it normally looks like, you will know when there's something wrong. And you know, like for women, we we usually get yeast infections and and all those things. So you will know when it's yeast infection and when it's an STI. You mm -hmm. know, like you will know the difference. The you will you will know when to get help. But then the thing is, we have so many things that are hidden. Some some women might not even know that the vagina and the urethra are different. Yeah. Some people might not know that. And so we need to be very aware of. Of what we look like, of who we are, and yeah, and also education on how we, like how your body works. Yeah, like know your reproductive system. The internet is not just for Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just or Twitter. Google things. Yeah, learn things. Talk to your friends. Mm. Talk to girls. Talk to other girls. <laughs> get to know things, regardless of what age you're at. I think information doesn't get stale mm. you know it doesn't um i think one of the hindrances might be this thing of having taboo topics mm. and so you find sex is not something you talk about freely or yeah. openly and um you know private parts and you know all these things you don't even call them by their name and private um, parts yeah you call it private parts and and all that and and yeah I think we should talk more openly and that will mean that even a 12 year old will know what an yeast infection is because yeah. for the longest time when I was young when I was a teenager I thought and I used to get them a lot I used yeah. to get uh, yeast infections a lot and I thought I had an STI but mm -hmm. I wasn't having sex but mm -hmm. then and it reached the point where I thought I had AIDS mm -hmm. you know but then why because no one ever talked about uh, no older woman ever, you know, said, oh, I'm itching down mm. there or, you know, or mentioned having problems like that. Yeah. And so when I had the problems, I thought I had done something wrong. Yeah. But then it was normal, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I got older, that's when I realized, oh, wait, that was normal, you know, like, oh, and then you know how to prevent it and, yeah. and all those things. So I always say that um, I think I've reached the point of self-awareness where yeah. um, I would know if I'm pregnant, like in the first week. Because <laughs> I I know everything and I can feel every yeah. weird thing that's happening in my body. You yeah. know yourself. Yeah. You know yeah. yourself enough because you've taken time to learn mm. about yourself. Yeah. And I think it also comes in with people being too hush hush about sex. Mm -hmm. Like we're not saying teach children about positions. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're just saying 
have them educated about general anatomy yeah. um physiology and especially you know what affects them what might affect them what is normal what is not normal what mm -hmm. to look out for and just to have a love for your vagina it's not just an organ that brings children into the world then it's special mm -hmm. it's yours you know mm -hmm. it belongs to you and expressing a love for your expressing a love for yourself and your vagina is normal mm -hmm. it should be normal yeah it should be and yeah you should be able to say vagina do you talk about sex like openly on forums with your friends with your family like what's your sex conversation like mm. well i do i though i think i might have a segmented personality kind of thing so i don't talk about sex with my family mm. because no one will listen obviously and they'll be like what what are you saying close my penis and all those things but then I, I talk about sex very openly with my friends, yeah, and um, wherever I have an opportunity to. So anyone I come in contact with, I talk about sex. Like for me, it's it's a really natural part of life. I don't get why it should be hidden. Yeah. And there's so many things I have learned from just conversations. And I feel like it's something that shouldn't be, you know, kept secret. Yeah. But obviously... Um, one of the things of being married is that they don't, <laughs> you're not allowed to talk about sex openly. And so they tell you, don't put your sex life out there. I'm not telling you what I do, you know, in what I did last night. Yeah. I'm just telling you my preferences or what I think about sex or, you know, like proper educational issues. Educational stuff. Yeah, educational stuff or common experiences amongst people because know? that's how we learn yeah we yeah. learn through experiences our own experiences mm -hmm. and other people's experiences and it's just kind of the cycle of life i guess mm -hmm. yeah so keeping things hidden doesn't really help a lot of people a lot of people would like to learn would like to have access to information but it's such a taboo like that's one of the things that i dislike I love being an African person, I love being a Zambian person, but when it comes to sharing information, I really dislike the culture that we have of keeping everything private. We keep so many things private, we keep we make so many things taboo because it makes us uncomfortable to talk about them. So we think that it should make other people uncomfortable as well. And that doesn't really help um, a lot of us, especially in a place where we have such a high, I hate, to, I hate to do this, but we have mm. such a high number of HIV uh, and AIDS cases. Yes. We have very little knowledge about STIs. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy that you still want to keep these things secret when you look at the numbers and it's scary. Yeah. You, you don't want to talk about it, but you know everyone's doing it. Yeah. And so that debate of should we put condoms in schools, like, you know the kids are having sex, yeah. but why are we not trying to protect them, you know? And this whole thing of not talking about things is what causes problems to be, to, to last for a long time. So yeah. take for instance syphilis. Syphilis is an STI that the longer it takes, mm. the more it will manifest itself, even, you know, more mm. complicated. It, yeah. Eventually it makes people mentally ill mm. and all those things. And it, it was, it's such a thing where if you had caught it in the first month, you could have sorted it out yeah. and you would have been okay. Why? But you didn't. You just go and get backdoor antibiotics and things like that. And yeah, I think we need to talk about things like this. Like you don't even have to go into the details. Don't say... You know, like you know, yeah, okay, no, Mary, Wilbur, you know, just <laughs> give us <laughs> all those just, things. Just, that... just have an open conversation and don't just learn about yourself. It's also important for us as women to learn about men and their bodies mm -hmm. because I feel like if you get to know someone's body, you don't just care for your partner on a cosmetic level you care for them enough that you care about their health as well yeah. yeah that's true and you'll be able to tell when 
there's something wrong and you'll be able to you know alert your partner yeah. and they they can go and check the the whatever is wrong yeah. because i've i've heard of um stories where a woman has breast cancer and the partner is the first one to to know and notice that there's something yeah. wrong with the breast you know and so yeah, that awareness of <laughs> yeah it's something different yeah so that awareness of each other's bodies is mm -hmm. very important because it helps in in health seeking um situations yeah. especially considering how traditional our cultures are do zambian women want sex like do we want sex <sighs> I'm not sure. The thing is, as much as we talk about conversations and, mm. and, and all that, I'm not sure. I, I haven't talked to enough women to know whether they want sex or not. Do they even like sex? Mm. You know, like, um, so we are taught, let's say, since, you know, I'm married, they, they say, don't say no to your husband. You know, if, you're, if you say no, if you keep saying no, um, not to sex, I mean, um, then he will go out and sleep with someone else. No, like they that defies the whole autonomy thing. Like I will have sex when I want to have mm. sex, and um, but then that is always met with, oh, okay, then be prepared for him to leave. So what are you saying? Are you saying I should always be ready for sex? And so I think this whole expectation of not of having sex even when you don't want to, yeah. it kind of takes away the pleasure. Mm. It takes away from the pleasure of having sex. Because and it so, becomes a chore. Yeah, yeah, it becomes one of the chores. It's like, I don't want to wash the dishes all the time, and so I don't like it because I know I have to even when I don't, you know, like the fact that I live alone, I need to do it, you know. Yeah. And so, um, uh, sex, when it becomes a chore, it's not liked, you know. It becomes just one of the things. Mm. But do women want sex? I can. I think I can only answer on my part. Mm. I want sex. Yes, <laughs> lots of it. <laughs> I do it, Paige. No, but then, yeah, you know, like I do. I I have talked to a few women that that like sex also, yeah. and um, yeah, it's it's not a duty. It's it's a pleasure, and yeah. and I think we should seek out as much pleasure as we can from it. There's, there's this thing that um, um, I, I was reading a statistic. Mm. Uh, it wasn't a statistic, but it was just a, a thing. Someone was saying um, w women in same-sex relationships mm. get more orgasms than women in heterosexual relationships. Okay? Food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it means that a woman having sex with a woman definitely you're going to have an orgasm somewhere there, you know, mm. like most of the times. But then a man having sex with a woman... We're not getting as many orgasms as we should. So I think we should go out there and claim our orgasms. And and I think the more orgasms you have, the the more you like sex. You know, the more you will enjoy it and you wanna have it more. And and the thing with the body is that with the female body is that um when the more sex you have, mm. the more sex you want. Mm. And so the more orgasms you have, the easier the orgasms become. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Chipo, for coming. You, I've had me. a very interesting conversation. So, you know, as always, this is an open-ended conversation. If you have any questions, comment below, tweet me, tweet her, <laughs> tweet <Yeah>. us. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, we're always keen to engage in girl chat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, grab that mirror. Look at your vagina. Know that you're worth more than your virginity, your marriage, or your children. And just go out there and claim your orgasm. Yes! <laughs> claim them! <laughs>